Welcome back to RetroAxis. As I've been continuing to explore the ZX Spectrum, which I picked up in London, I quickly determined uh, after I got it working that the joystick that came with the eBay purchase is actually an Atari wired joystick, so it doesn't operate properly with the Sinclair games. The Sinclair Spectrum uses a different set of pinouts than an Atari joystick, so what I'm going to do in this, uh, in this episode is I'm going to attempt to make uh, an adapter which allows me to use Atari joysticks on the Sinclair without modifying either the joystick or the Sinclair Spectrum computer. So uh, we're going to give that a shot. I've got various pieces and components here and uh, we'll do a build and we'll see how it turns out. So stick with us and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get started. <music> So here we are at my workbench, and so the first thing I, I did was I, I cannibalized a Sega Mega Drive or Genesis uh, controller. And the reason I did that was I know that it, it has enough wires inside for me to use. I know I need a minimum of, uh, of six, actually maybe seven wires. Um, this one has nine, which is perfect, um, as of course these ports are, are nine pins, so I have nine wires to work with. So I think this is going to be uh, going to be adequate. So what I've got here essentially is a, a, a cable that's ready to go. I've already stripped off the ends here. The next thing I need to do is figure out um, which color goes to which pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my multimeter here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on to the tone generation setting. And what I'm going to do is essentially uh, figure out um, you know which pin belongs to which. So the easiest way to do that here is I've actually got a a connector. I'm going to plug the DB9 into that connector. I've got some some leads here, which is typically used for going into a PCB where you would actually solder it down. Uh, but I'm going to use these to to help me. So um, knowing how the ports start on a uh, on a female connector, the most upper left port is is pin number five, and I can actually look inside the connector here. This is an Amphenol connector, uh, and I can actually verify that it's actually labeled in here. Uh, this top uh, left pin here is a one, and the one over here is the five. But when I so when I plug it in, five and five are going to match up. So I know that. So looking here, uh, I now know that this first uh, pin. I'm going to bend it out so I know which one it is. This is number five, and we can begin the process of trying to tone out uh, the actual um, colors. So what I'll do is I'll uh, just to keep myself sane. I'm going to use red lead here. I'm going to touch this pin and let's see which wire it is. Yep, there it is. It's the red wire so I know now that pin 5 is red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, stop here. I'll complete this uh, and then you, when, we, when you rejoin um, we'll move on to the next step. So stay tuned. All right, so now that I've got my tips ready to go, I'm now going to start the mapping process. So I know that coming out of the spectrum, if this, is, if this end's plugged into the spectrum, pin number five from here, which is the red cable, needs to go to Atari pin one. So pin one is this pin right here. So let me go ahead and get that going. Tip, ready? A little tin on here. Okay. And let's get that pin connected up. Right, so here we are. We've got the, um, essentially the connector soldered on, uh, on this side. So um, if everything went correctly with the map that I created, then um, this side here is, is wired for spectrum and this side is the equivalent Atari pins for an Atari joystick. So I'm going to go ahead and, and boot up um, Dizzy, which is uh, one of the ZX Spectrum games, uh, get it fired up, and we'll, we'll test the joystick out. So here's my ZX Spectrum. Um, it's a plus 2B, actually. I know it says plus 2A. Uh, there was actually a, a problem with the main boards on these original plus 2s, uh, plus 2As. Um, and they actually had to release an updated uh, board. So it actually has a plus 2B board in it, but uh, 
it basically keeps all the plus two a uh, names and all the things in in the system um, so I'm gonna go ahead and load dizzy from tape and I won't bore you with with the details about about um, the loading piece but essentially you type uh, J which is a shortcut for load to um, quotes hit enter it's now ready press play and it'll start loading um, so while that's working just to kind of show you what I've got so I do have my my new newly made um, crossover cable here uh, plugged into joystick port one I'm gonna use the um, there's the loading sound I'm gonna use the uh, the joystick that came with the um, the eBay purchase uh, just because I know it did work I was able to press to the right and verify that it did fire um, so so we'll try that I've also got a a slick stick which is another uh, aftermarket um, joystick so we'll try that one as well and then I've got the uh, the retro axis uh, logo joystick here so we'll we'll try that one as well so we've got a few joysticks here we can try out so we'll we'll see if we have any success um, if not then we'll go back to the drawing board so as soon as this loads uh, we'll be right back and we'll we'll test the game all right so dizzy's loaded So here I've got the slick stick uh, plugged into the adapter. I tried using that joystick that came with uh, the eBay purchase and it really just, just didn't work. So I think there might be something else wrong with it. So I just decided to cancel that test. So um, just to show you here, uh, the up button is, is, uh, is actually jump in the Dizzy game. Um, so pressing up, you see I'm actually controlling him uh, quite well. So that's all for today. Next time I'll take uh, this beginning product and I'll actually put it inside of uh, a, a 3D printed case so it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more finished. Um, so that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Retro Access. Mm -hmm.